if we read the gospel passages of the last few days we will see that there is a trend that is gradually developing initially we see that jesus tells us that we need to place our faith and trust in him it also tells us that we need to look beyond our problems we need to look for solutions yesterday we had this whole lesson on humility and today we see that continuing on the same theme of humility we have another aspect which the gospel teaches us one of the many aspects is recognizing christ in those whom we meet which we have seen developing in the last few days but sometimes we see in life that all of us are good at some activity or the other in our own field we are good at what we do but at the same time when we are good at something there is this human tendency to be arrogant this human tendency to have a lot of pride about what we are doing and this pride leads to arrogance and it leads to an attitude which is i know it all and we see that when somebody wants to tell us something or even if somebody gives us suggestions we are so hard hearted or we are so determined not to listen to that sometimes we may even go to the extent of insulting or ridiculing the other person because of their suggestions sometimes these suggestions may be useful they may be right but we are stuck on our own ideas or in our own views and we tend to ridicule what the others have said in other words we tend to dominate over the others even though our beliefs or our views may not be 100% true and this comes when there is lack of humility this comes when we feel that we know everything that we are right and the others are wrong and in a way this is a human tendency but we can tackle this and deal with it only with the grace of god and therefore in today's gospel we see that peter is a perfect example of this humility in a way in the first reading of today as well as in the gospel we see that peter is a kind of a hero figure now why do i say hero figure because we see that peter's activity indeed has been an example both in the first reading as well as in today's gospel now what did peter exactly do that made him an inspiration for others or why were the apostles so bold what changed in them well let's find that out during today's episode of tea time with the word But before we can begin our reflection let us take a look at the readings for Friday during the Easter week Today's first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles chapter 4 1 to 12 and the gospel is from the gospel of St John chapter 21 verses 1 to 14 In a way today's readings invite us to be true witnesses of Christ we see that in the gospel peter and his companions go back to the activity of fishing now we see that they were fishermen and jesus had called them they followed jesus and now they have lost hope after the death of jesus now it is very interesting to note that the disciples were so terrified that they went and they hid themselves and we see that jesus appeared to them in the gospel passage that we saw yesterday and today once again we see that jesus once again appears to them in fact he appears to them for the third time now the risen christ meets them in the same place that he had called them earlier and we see that in today's 
gospel passage. The disciples, most of them were called as they were in their work. Most of the disciples were fishermen. So as they were working on the boat, collecting fish or mending their nets, Jesus approached them, called them and they immediately went after him. Similarly, in today's gospel, Jesus chooses again the appropriate moment in order to encounter the disciples. And the same thing happens for us in our day-to-day -day lives. Jesus knows which moment is right in order to act. And therefore, sometimes we may be a bit anxious that our prayers are not heard or that nothing is happening, nothing new is happening. But we need to have patience. And here is where the whole aspect of faith and trust comes into play. It is only when we have faith and trust in the Lord that we will have patience and above all we will also have humility because we see that patience, humility, generosity and love are the foundational values which are absolutely essential in order to build a community. In other words, following the gospel values is absolutely necessary if we want to help Jesus in his mission of building the kingdom of God on earth. Now, when Jesus encounters us in others, when he meets us through our friends, through our relatives, we see that Jesus gives us new hope and he reaffirms our faith by sharing in our joys and by walking with us in our times of sorrow. The same thing happened with the disciples. Jesus met them when they had lost hope. They were completely disappointed. In a way, they would have felt that whatever they expected of Jesus was all in vain. But Jesus knows exactly when to meet them. And as they are in the boat going fishing, Jesus meets them on the shore and he has this encounter with them. And thus we see that Jesus reaffirms their faith in him. And he does this by sharing in the joy of his victory over death. Jesus prepares them to be his committed witnesses in order to proclaim the coming of the kingdom of God. And the perfect example of this is seen in the first reading of today. Now we all know the context of today's first reading. It goes to two days back where we see that Peter and John are in the temple or, and there they heal a man who was lame. And what happens is, immediately it catches the attention of the people. The people are surprised and most importantly, it also catches the attention of the chief priests and the elders. As a result, we see that they are kept overnight in custody and the next day they are questioned. The chief priests and those who related to the chief priests question Peter and John. And there is something here we see that is completely new about these two. In fact, about all the disciples. Let's take for example Peter. We know Peter had denied Jesus three times. Once Jesus was condemned and taken to be crucified, we see that the disciples were so afraid that they hid themselves. But now we see that Peter and John, they are completely new. They are brave enough to face anything that can come in their way. And how does this change take place? Well, this is the change of their encounter with the risen Lord. This is a change which has been brought about by the gift of the Holy Spirit. We see that the disciples received the Holy Spirit and it is the Holy Spirit which gave them the power in order to face anything that may be thrown at them. It allowed them to be brave in the face of difficulties, in the face of trials. And that is why whenever the chief priests asked them or questioned them, Peter as well as the other disciples were bold enough to answer. They were bold enough to speak in the name of Jesus. And once again we see that it is Peter who tells that it is the same Jesus whom the Jews rejected, 
whom the Jews condemned and crucified. It is through the same name of Jesus that they are healing people. And in this way, Peter and the disciples are so much convinced of the work of Jesus in their lives. They are so convinced what Jesus has taught them that they now go all out in order to proclaim the kingdom of God and to be witness to the testimony and works of Jesus. In a way, all of us have been called to do the same. Why you may ask? Well, we see that all of us have received the love of God. We see that the Lord loves us unconditionally in spite of our shortcomings. And all this goes to show that we too need to have the same attitude towards others in our lives. And therefore, in the first reading, Peter and John make their faith proclamation to the Jewish community. And this is because they are empowered, enlightened and transformed by the Spirit to be witnesses of the risen Lord and to perform miracles in the name of Jesus. In a way, all of us can ask this question to ourselves. How do we recognize the risen Lord in our lives and become true witnesses of Christ? Coming to today's gospel passage, we see that after they had lost faith, Peter and a few of the other disciples, they go to the seashore, they get onto the boat and decide to go fishing. Now they have toiled all night long and haven't caught a single fish. And then as they come with a lot of disappointment, they come to the show and we see that there is Jesus. Initially, they may not have recognized him. But when Jesus tells them to put the net on the left, we see that Peter immediately does so. Though he knows that they have probably put the net in that same area the whole night. They haven't caught anything. But still out of humility, still out of respect for the other person, he does so. And we see that he is rewarded. They catch so much fish that their nets are about to tear and therefore they require some help to get it onto the show. And immediately Peter recognizes that it is the Lord. And we are told that none of the others who were there dared to question who it was. They knew it was Jesus. And that is exactly what we need in our lives. We encounter so many people in our day-to-day -day living. We need to be able to recognize Jesus in others. Because we see that God speaks to us in many different ways. If we are able to recognize Jesus in others, if we are able to see the works of God in our family members, in our friends, in our colleagues, we see that the whole world will be a much better place. In other words, this whole aspect of being brothers and sisters, this whole aspect of building the kingdom of God on earth will come true. And the task is simple. We need to recognize Jesus in those around us. But at the same time, though it may be easy to say, it is quite challenging because this requires some kind of discipline on our part as well. First and foremost, we need to be humble. We need to be generous. We need to love unconditionally without expecting anything else in return. If we are able to discipline ourselves to follow these things, then I'm sure we will be able to recognize Jesus and the works of the Lord in our lives. At the same time, we see we live in a context of religious and political discrimination. We live in times of economic instability and consumerism. And all this affects the poor and the marginalized in a very major way. In this desperate situation, we see that the risen Lord wants us to empower and strengthen the poor and the marginalized in order that they may be able to face the situation with hope and faith. As the saying goes, if a person is hungry, you don't only give him the fish, but you teach him how to fish. And this is exactly what is meant when Jesus tells us that we need to empower the poor and the marginalized. 
first and foremost we need to make them aware of their rights we need to make them aware of how they can stand on their feet most importantly we need to give them the dignity that they have lost if we are able to do all this definitely we will be true witnesses of jesus because if we look at the whole ministry of jesus the whole ministry was based on empowering people the whole ministry was based on the humanness of jesus jesus looked at humanity first he was not concerned about the other nitty gritties of the law but he was concerned about human well being and human happiness if the people are happy then the law is fulfilled because the law was made for the people and not people for the law in this way we see that the apostles were able to recognize this aspect of jesus and now after being empowered themselves by the risen lord after being given the gift of the holy spirit we see that they are able to be thorough witnesses they are able to be brave courageous and face whatever is thrown at them and in this way we can ask ourselves this question do we recognize the risen christ in others and can we find the works of god in times of desolation in times of trial and challenges do we see god by serving the poor and the marginalized if we could then we would become true witnesses of the risen christ and in a way let us pray for this grace that as we reflect on today's readings we ask the lord to give us the grace to be courageous to be bold so that we may be his true witnesses that our words and actions may speak of the goodness of the lord so that we too may be able to reach out to others and empower the others by transforming their lives and being a light in their lives amen